I've got about five more minutes, I guess. I've discovered something else also. Ladies and gentlemen, all successful people follow the same philosophy. I want to be purposely redundant about that. And don't forget this. All successful people follow the same philosophy. You may call it by many different brand names. There are those who call it the power of positive thinking. There are those who call it possibility thinking. There are those who may call it PMA, positive mental attitude. But by whatever brand name, you will find a commonality of positive mindedness in all successful people. And we find that in Muhammad Ali. He believed that he could do what he did. And he said what he would do and did it. <laughs> Talking about the Bible for a moment. You know, so many times people see the scripture fulfilled before their eyes and don't even realize it. Another key scripture from the Holy Bible. As a man thinks, so is he. And it has nothing to do with race. Muhammad Ali has just given us an example of the laws which govern the universe. And he alluded to the law of gravity, which briefly explains is what goes up must come down. If a white man throws a ball into the air, it comes down. If a black man throws a ball into the air, it comes down. If a black man believes that he's the greatest, he becomes the greatest, and we've seen it. If a white man believes that he's the greatest, he becomes the greatest in whatever he goes after. This is the meaning of the scripture. The Lord, meaning the law of mind, the cosmic law of mind, is no respecter of persons. This is one reason why I never got into the black power movement, because I've been black all of my life and never could spend it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the only color of power in the American economy is green power. The sooner you find that out and get some of it, the better off you'll be. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Which simply means, as a man thinks of himself, so is he. Another cosmic law. You will never become any more than what you think you are. This is again, positive self-image psychology. And this is one of the names of the philosophy that I represent, positive self-image psychology. What you believe you are, you will become. A person's experience in life, a person's lot in life, builds itself around the subjective self-image. What do you believe about yourself? Never mind what other people say about you. What do you believe about yourself? You believe you're no good, then you'll be no good. Do you believe that you're a low-down, dirty, stinking, hell-bound sinner? And this is an amazing thing about evangelists over the years. They have preached to people and, and, and told people really how terrible they are and that they're going to hell. But you know why I stopped preaching that? Because I looked around and I saw that people were already in hell and it was time to show them the way out. As I say, we know how bad we can be. Every one of us here, we know how bad we can be. And I want to forget about how bad I can be and think about how good I can be with the help of the God in me and become that good and do that good and have that good. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever your self-image is, it will compel the circumstances in your life. This is why Brother Paul says in the scriptures, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You must renew your self-image. What I'm talking about is not a racial thing at all. The only formula, and here again, this is a cosmic law. This is a law of God. Whatever your self-image is will govern your experience. And too many times on the sociological level, 
We've tried to give the underprivileged people better things without giving them a better image of themselves. If you give a man a better house without giving a man a better image of himself, he'll tear the damn house down. And I hope it goes on television just like that. I have no bishop to turn me out. They turned me out and I'm so glad Jesus set me free. We must give the so-called underprivileged people a better idea of themselves. Let us stop stamping people with negative self-images, telling people you are underprivileged, you're deprived. If you tell a person that he's disadvantaged and he believes it, he is automatically put at a disadvantage. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The great fortunes, the great captains of industry here in America who founded great fortunes, you will find that way back of every fortune, there was somebody who came here raggedy and penniless and who motivated themselves and worked their way up. Let's stop giving people the idea that the world owes you something, that society owes you something. The only thing that the world owes you is that which you work and earn. And so self-motivation is also what we're about. And to be self-motivated means to be a self-mover. Get active with me with your hands for just a moment and say self-mover. <laughs> this is what self-motivation is all about. It means that you can move yourself. If you're in a rut, you can move yourself out of it. If you're in a condition that you don't like being in, you can move yourself out of it. Because if you sit in the hole, if you sit in the rut, waiting for the white folks or society or the Democrats or the Republicans to move you out, you will certainly die in a lost condition. The Democrats can't save you. The Republicans can't save you. The world system can't save you. The first sermon ever preached in the Christian church on the day of Pentecost by the Apostle Peter rang with the words, Save yourself from this untoward generation. <laughs> Let me tell you something else about the world for a moment. Do you know the world is never going to be saved? I don't care how much evangelists preach. A lot of good people have tried to save this world. Two things that the world will not stand for, and that's a savior or a conqueror. The world always defeats its would-be conquerors and crucifies its would-be saviors. That's why I gave it up. I stopped trying to save the world. If you don't want to go to heaven, you can go to hell. I'm trying to save one. And when I keep myself straight, I do damn well. And you too. Because this is the only way that you can really contribute to the salvation of the world. By being what you ought to be yourself. And doing what you ought to do yourself. And then, as the scripture says, men will see your good works. And glorify your Father, which is in heaven. You have the God-given power to change your life by changing your thoughts. And this book teaches you how to do it. It's Reverend Ike's best-selling study guide, Health, Joy, and Prosperity for You. And that's exactly what you'll achieve. In 52 easy-to-read chapters, Reverend Ike shocks you, entertains you, and above all, teaches you powerful and effective techniques for using the power of your own mind to be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have what you want to have. This life-changing book is available in paperback and digital format, and it's a must-have for everyone who wants to master the law of attraction and learn how to create good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. Get your copy now.